All right, let's start getting into polynomials. <clears throat> so a polynomial, remember poly means many. So we're talking about an equation that has many terms, okay? So I gave you this formal definition right here in the middle so that you can start getting used to seeing how it's written formally. So n would be our highest power, which is also our degree, okay? So a monomial is one term. A term is like a chunk of the equation or a chunk of it's one piece. So a term are the things that are being added together, the items being added together or subtracted. The degree is the highest power. Standard form means that it's, the terms are in order. From the highest degree to the lowest degree. A constant is the number with no variable. Okay, so let's look at some examples of polyn or of terms, okay, of polynomials or of monomials. I'm just going to give you one. So what are examples that these monomials could be? We're going to make a little table here. We're going to have ones that are good and ones that are bad. So which ones are good? Good would be an x to the third, okay? Good would be maybe we have two variables, um, maybe we have a negative out in front. Maybe we have even a fraction out in front. Okay, all of those are good. Now, what are some examples of not good? These would be uh, negative exponents or fraction exponents. Those are not, those are not good. We're not going to use those. So that would be like to the square root of x. Well, the square root of x is really 2x to the 1 half, right? Um, or we could have something like this. Well, we have that negative exponent, so it would go down to the bottom. Or maybe it's already put in a fraction. So maybe you have something like this. Okay, those would be bad examples, okay? Now with that, let's talk about highest degree real fast. I'm going to add that right here. Your highest degree, if you have more than one variable, you have to add the degrees together. So sometimes we're going to have x to the fifth plus 2x to the third minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Well, my highest degree for this one would be right here. Okay, but let's say we have 9x squared y to the 5th minus 6x <clears throat> to the 7th y to the 3rd plus um, 7x squared y to the 10th. Okay, so for the first one, my degree would be 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. 2 plus 10 is 12. So my degree on this would be 12 because that's my highest. So if you have more than one variable, remember to add your powers together to get your degree. All right, let's look at some terms here. So we have number of terms, the name, and then I'm going to give you an example. So if you need to pause the video to make this lovely graph, go ahead and do that. All right, so we already talked about this. Number of terms, one. What was that called? That was a monomial, mono, one. An example of that would be something like 4x squared. What's it called when we have two terms? That would be a binomial. We talked about that when we were factoring. 
binomial has two terms. So let's say 2x minus 5. When we have three terms, we're looking at a trinomial. We also talked about that with quadratics. Trinomial has three terms. That would be something like 5x to the 7th plus 4x squared minus 3. Three terms. 1, 2, 3. And when it has four or more terms, we just kind of generalize it as a polynomial. The others are also polynomials, but four or more, we generalize it. So that could be something like 3x to the 4th. Uh, minus 11x to the third plus 9x squared plus 5x minus 7. Okay, lots of terms. Now let's talk about degrees. When we have degrees, if there's no, no degree, there's zero degree, there's no variable, okay, like x to the zero. What happens? What is x to the zero? It's 1. What's 5x to the zero? It's 5. How does that work? Okay, if you take your calculator and do you do 5 to the 0, you get 1. So when we have our degree of 0 or there's no variable, that's called a constant. An example of that would be just a number. When we have a degree of 1 as our highest power, this is when we have a linear a linear, okay, a line equation. So that would be something like um, 2x plus 7. When we have a degree of 2, what did we just get done doing? We just got done doing quadratics. That would be something like x squared plus 3x minus 1. When we have a highest power of 3, this is called a cubic. That would look something like negative 2x to the third plus 5x minus 8. Not every single power has to be present. When we have the highest degree of 4, this is called a quartic. That would be something like 3x to the 4th minus 11x to the 3rd plus 9x squared plus 5x minus 7. Okay, your next one, a degree of 5, that would be a quintic. An example of that could be something like this, negative 2x to the 5th plus 23, okay? So when we wrote our term with that n, that n represents the highest degree. That's all it represents. So nth degree polynomial. It can be as high as you want it, okay? Example of that, anything above five. Let's do five x to the seventh plus four x squared minus three. Okay, there's an example of that. Now, let's start actually getting into doing some stuff with polynomials. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate polynomials. Now we've technically already evaluated expressions. This should look familiar, but I'm gonna show you two ways to evaluate a polynomial. So when we have this polynomial, 3x to the 4th minus 7x squared plus 6x minus 8, when we have f of 2, remember that 2 represents the x value. So we're actually going to plug in 2 for each x that's above. So we'd have 3 times 2 to the 4th minus 7 times 2 squared plus 6 times 2 minus 8. Okay, grab that calculator. Big mistake that people typically make accidentally, it's not 2 times 4, it's 2 to the 4th power. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well, 2 to the 4th power is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. The next one, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 7 is 28. 6 times 2 is 12, bring down that minus 8. Now we're going to put all these together. So we have 48 minus 28 plus 12 minus 8. That gives you a lovely 24, which means the point on the graph would be at 2, 
24. Now, we also have synthetic substitution. If you've done synthetic division, it's very similar to that. So synthetic substitution, what you're going to do is you're going to put that 2 into the magic box. So I'm going to bring down our equation again. We have 3x to the 4th minus 7x squared plus 6x minus 8. So we have a magic box. That's what I always called our synthetic division box. So in that magic box is whatever we're trying to plug in, what we're evaluating. Then I'm going to list the coefficients before every single degree. Now, if a degree is missing, if a power is missing, you put a zero in. So my highest degree is x to the fourth. The number in front of it, the coefficient is three. I don't have an x to the third, so I'm going to put in a zero. Uh, the number in front of x squared is negative seven. The number in front of x is six. And then I have my constant eight. So here's my synthetic substitution. So it works the same as synthetic division. Now, synthetic division, your remainder should be zero if it's a solution, right? Well, with synthetic substitution, your remainder should be your answer. So our first step is to bring that three straight down. Then I'm going to multiply three times the magic box, so three times two, which is six. I'm going to add down zero plus six is six. I'm going to multiply through the magic box. Six times two is 12. I'm going to add straight down. Negative 7 plus 12 is 5. M multiply to the magic box. 5 times 2 is 10. Add straight down. 6 plus 10 would be 16. Multiply to the magic box. 16 times 2 would be positive 32. Add straight down. Negative 8 plus 32 is 24. Did we get the same thing as above? Yes, we did. So that means your y value is 24 when your x value is 2. Now let's talk about our lovely features of a graph. <laughs> so when we, multi when we graph polynomials, how in the world does this work? Remember, polynomials are kind of the weird shapes. So we have our quadratic. We have stuff like this. We could have stuff like this, right? We have all of those things. So number of turns, number of turns is the power, highest degree, I'll do degree instead of power, highest degree minus one. This guy right here would be an x to the third graph. Actually, both of these are. This one flattens, which means we have a triple root. This one, they all go through, and I have one, two, three x-intercepts. So my end behaviors, let's talk about those. I'm going to bring that down, down here where I have a little more room. So end behaviors. We have x to an even. We have negative x to an even degree. We have x to an odd degree, like x to the third, and then we have negative x to an odd degree. So let's think first, let's think about quadratics, even. If I have a positive x squared, I have up, up, which means my end behaviors are both pointing up. If I have a negative x to an even power, so negative x squared, my end behaviors are down, down. Okay, that's our upside down parabola, or u. That works for any any power that's even. So negative x to the fourth, both of your ends are going to point down. Negative x to the eighth, both of your ends are going to point down. Now, if we're talking odd, it's kind of like slope. A positive x to an odd power, so positive x to the third, is going to be going down and then up. Think of your line. A line starts down and goes up. Okay? And then same for a negative x to an odd. It's going to start up and go down, just like a negative slope would be going downhill. Okay, and that works again for any odd power. Okay, so those are your end behaviors. Your degree, again, is the highest power. And then your relative extrema, what does that mean? Relative extrema. 
Well, let's think about that. That is kind of like how many humps you have. So how many times is it going to um, change, okay? The turns of the graph. The not really maximum and minimums because the graph goes on forever, but they're relative max and mins. So if we look at this graph up here that I'm circling, your relative extrema would be like right here. Here's your relative max and your relative min, right? Because the graph is gonna go above and below those because the end behaviors go on forever both directions. But those are your relative extrema. They're, they're your turns in the graph. It's where your graph is changing directions. And to know how many turns you have, you're going to take your highest power or your degree minus 1. Okay, so if we had x to the n as our highest degree, your relative extrema would be n minus 1. And that will tell you how many you have, how many bumps or turns in the graph you have. Okay, so we're going to practice finding all of these different pieces today.